Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Thursday, December 10th, 2015. Here are our top stories. Tonight, a green light has been given for drone assassination. How many more lives will be lost to unaccountability? Then, the FCC takeover of the internet and reactions to one of Trump's most controversial statements yet. That's next. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. Well, I'm going to say it here clear for everyone because I actually agree with what Donald Trump has said. We do need to have a total and complete shutdown of everyone coming from a long list of nations who have not been properly vetted. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 we're going to talk about politics in just a moment, uh, but before we do, let's talk about something that is real, that's really serious and dangerous. The New York Times reported today, and it was uh, carried on the Drudge Report, psychiatric drugs are being prescribed to infants. That's right, to infants. Listen to this case they have. Uh, they start out with Andrew Rios's seizures began when he was five months old and only got worse. At 18 months, when an epilepsy medication resulted in violent behavior, a neurologist prescribed him with the antipsychotic Risperdal, a drug typically used to treat schizophrenia and bipolar disorder in adults, rarely used for children as young as five. Now understand, this all began at the age of five months. Why did he begin to have epileptic seizures at five months? We have seen over and over again reports with the uh, vaccine uh, court that uh, you're supposed to go to. You, you cannot sue the companies for adverse vaccine reactions, so you go to that court. We've seen over and over again there and elsewhere. These seizures are typically the result of an adverse reaction to vaccines. That's why we're seeing an explosion of this condition. And understand that this is why Texas is given the only exemption in Texas law to marijuana for medical marijuana use. The only exemption for medical marijuana use is for treating out of control epileptic seizures. It is about the only thing that controls epileptic seizures. But rather than admitting that in most cases, what the government will do, what the medical establishment will do, is to prescribe dangerous drugs that should never be given even to adults, let alone to children. Now they go on and they continue with this story of Andrew Rios. They say, when he screamed in his sleep, when he seemed to interact with people and objects that were not there, his frightened mother researched Risperdal and discovered the drug was not approved for use with children. She said when they came to her, the doctor said, it was just like, take this, it's no big deal. It's like they were Tic Tacs. That's the way the government runs. Now they point out that almost 20,000 prescriptions for Risperidone, commonly known as Risperdal, and other antipsychotic medications were written in 2014 for children two and younger. Understand that. 20,000 prescriptions for these dangerous drugs for children two and under. It's a 50% jump from one year earlier. So they've increased this by 50% in just a year. This is the new trend. Even the New York Times is talking about this. Prescriptions for Prozac for children rose 23% in just one year to about 83,000 prescriptions. 83,000 prescriptions of Prozone to infants. This is insanity. 
This is the insanity of locking people up for using something that is safe and effective like marijuana. This is the insanity of requiring vaccinations without our informed consent. Again, like she says, it's like they're handing out Tic Tacs. It's the same attitude that they have towards uh, vaccinations. We just saw the California uh, government, their state government, waive the prohibitions against using thimerosal, which is mercury, folks. They put thimerosal, mercury, and the vaccines and the flu vaccines. They just had the state government waive that prohibition, saying, oh, it's more important that we get the flu vaccines out to people than that we are injecting mercury into adults and into children. They point out a dozen experts in child psychology and neurology said they had never heard of a child younger than three receiving such medication. They presumed the parents and the doctors, presumably desperate and well-meaning, were trying to alleviate thrashing temper tantrums. Thrashing temper tantrums, is that the way we handle our children now? We can no longer function as adults. And we can no longer function as children. We can no longer raise our own children because why would you be so concerned about temper tantrums? Well, they continue. The kind of temper tantrums that get children kicked out of daycare. We have split up the family so that most families have a single parent, so they have to use daycare. We have increased the taxes for the family so that most parents have to, both parents have to work to make ends meet. And so daycare is the only thing that we can do with our children. We need to rethink this whole system. We need to rethink how we got here. We need to rethink the necessity of having a tax code. As I've pointed out many times before, it was Harry Brown that came up with the uh, proposition, and of course he did it at the times that he ran as, uh, for president as a libertarian. And he went back and he looked at the tax code and he said, how much income does the income tax uh, uh, contribute to our operating budget for the federal government? Okay, well it's X percentage. What if we were to cut the expenditures of the federal government that amount of money? How far back would we have to go? And you know what it is today? We would have to go back to a government the size it was in 2004. 2004. Could you live with a government that was the size it was in 2004 so that you would have no income tax? No income tax. Zero income tax. How about that? How's that for a simple plan? How's that for a flat plan? How's that for a plan that is not regressive? Okay? A 0% income tax rate. Could you live with a government that was the size it was in 2004 so that we didn't have to force parents, both parents, to go to work and put their children in daycare? I think we could. Now, there's another story that's up on the uh, Drudge Report today, and I think it's something that's relevant before we go into talking about Donald Trump. The sinking impact of mainstream media. And they point out on the Hill, uh, they say, can there be any further doubt that we've now come to a time when the rightward half of the country receives much the mainstream media, big city newspapers, I think, they perceive that to be carriers of Democrat or left-leaning news and opinion. Of course they do. The media deny this, but their denials, indeed the very idea that the way to address this matter is to deny it or to contest it, change nothing. Now, of course, it's not just the left-stream media, okay? It is also Fox, and Fox has become dominant because, yes, it is true. It is true that the rest of the mainstream media goes to the left and covers the Democrats. So Fox does just the opposite on their TV broadcasts. They moved consciously to the right. But the issue is, and I think Fox has become just as obsequious to the right as the rest of the media is to the left. And so the question is, why do, have they lost their audiences? They've lost their audiences because they've lost their credibility. In many cases, what they try to do, as Fox will say, they say, we report, you decide. That's the myth of objectivity. The very stories that you decide to report betray your worldview. And there's nothing wrong with having a worldview. There's nothing wrong with having an opinion. You should have some facts to back up that opinion. But we can have a situation where we have a debate between the William F. Buckley's and the Gore Vidal's. We can have that kind of debate. We should have a lively debate. That kind of debate where people have strong opinions and they defend them with facts and with basis, that's precisely what makes our country healthy. That's why we need to have a free internet. That's why we do not need to shut the internet down, even portions of it, folks. When you censor the internet and you say, I'm doing it just a little bit, that's like saying, 
she's a little bit pregnant. Censorship is censorship. If you cannot, if you cannot in the free marketplace of ideas bring your ideas across, then you lose. It's just that simple. But you have to have freedom. You have to hold freedom above all things. So the reason they're losing credibility is because they're lying to people and lying to themselves in many cases, thinking that they're objective, but the very stories that they cover, not only the, uh, the angles, but the stories that they cover themselves, betray their bias. And it's fine to have a bias. Just be honest about it. And we have to understand that the alternative media is going to lose its credibility as well. If we sell our objectivity, if we sell our principles for access, we cannot do that. This election is offering many things to us. It's not really offering us a choice of presidential candidates. It's offering us other choices, though. The electorate is being offered choices from both the left and from the right, saying, will you give up your liberty for this, for money? Will you give it up for safety? Will you give it up for this? Will you give it up for that? That's where they come at you the entire time. And what they are trying to get from the public is their liberty, but what they're trying to get from journalists is their principles, their integrity. Will you give it up for access? And we have to say, no, we're not going to give it up for access. Now, what is it about Donald Trump that is resounding with people? Well, he is telling people he is addressing their felt needs in a way that Jeb Bush and others aren't. The story from Washington Post, Jeb Bush's super PAC is burning through money with little to show for it. He has spent $50 million of this massive war chest. He jumped up to over $100 million in these super PACs at the very beginning. And it was far more than his brother had spent in his entire campaign. Back in 2000, George W. was accused of buying the presidential campaign because he spent $100 million. It was the first time anybody had done that. And yet here we are. We haven't even got to the first primary yet. And Jeb Bush, his brother, has burned through $50 million in a record blitz. And it is a record blitz. Yes, they are trying to buy the election. But the reason that his support is shrinking just like his war chest is shrinking, is because he has open contempt for what the American public want. He's going to share, sell you a corporatist, crony capitalist agenda of open borders and global control. And he doesn't care whether you agree with that or not. And he thinks you're going to fall for it. He thinks we're back in the days when Walter Cronkite and a few people could control American public opinion. That isn't the case. That will not be the case as long as we have a free internet. That's why Republicans left and why politicians left and right want to control the internet because that's the way they get control of you again. Now, what Donald Trump said about Islam is, uh, and I want to look at some of the reactions to this. I think what he said was essentially right, even though it was very blunt in the way that he put it. We've had Rand Paul and now Ted Cruz introducing legislation that would put a moratorium on people coming to the country from jihadi organizations until we can vet those people. That is a rational solution to a very dangerous situation. But the way he put it out there, just saying we're going to ban Muslims, uh, people are reading into that what they want. And that's the thing we need to be careful about, that we do not project things onto candidates as we saw happen with Obama, just because we want to support that particular candidate. But I wanna look at some of the reactions to what he had to say. Muhammad Ali, for example, comes back, and of course, he's one of the world's most famous Muslims, and he says, uh, this goes against the very tenets of our religion. He says, I believe our political leaders should use their position to bring understanding about the religion of Islam and to clarify that these misguided murderers have perverted people's views on what Islam really is. Well, I would say to Muhammad Ali that it is not the responsibility of political leaders to be apologists for Islam. If you have radical Islamists who are creating acts of mass violence, then it is the Islamic leaders who need to speak out against them. And for the most part, what we are hearing is crickets. We're not hearing any condemnation of that from the Islamic leaders. So Muhammad Ali and the rest of you who are supporters of Islam, then tell us what